When the streetlights turn on and everyone else is heading home, we are just catching our second wind. Because when the world rests, we roll up our sleeves. For 250 years, we have been seekers, doers, and change agents, creators and explorers. This is our city. This is our school. This place is for you. Good evening and welcome to the College of Charleston Virtual Open House. I'm Devin Thompson, Senior Associate Director of Admissions Events, and I will be moderating tonight's event off camera. We are so thrilled that you all are considering the College of Charleston as you begin your college search and application process. And we hope tonight's event and open house will answer some of the questions that you have about the College of Charleston. During tonight's event, we're going to focus on the Cougar Connection, what student life at the College of Charleston is really like. We know that you want to hear from the student perspective, and we have a great lineup of student panelists available to answer all of your questions as they pertain to student life at CFC. To kick us off, though, we're going to get started um, with an admissions information session led by our Assistant Director for Admissions, Aisha Steele. Um, and like I said, we'll follow up with that live student panel. But before we begin, I would like to introduce our Vice President of University Marketing and Enrollment Planning, Amy Takayama Perez. Amy? Thank you, Devin, and welcome to all of our prospective Cougars. Uh, whether you are a rising junior or a rising senior, we are just so excited to have you with us. I know um, it's been another uh, unprecedented year. I know you probably hate hearing that word, but uh, we know that you're resilient. We know that you had um, had a great year this year and that you're probably very much looking forward to a summer break. So congratulations to uh, to the end of your semester. And like Devin said, this is just a great opportunity to learn about uh, CFC. Um, what I will tell you is we never stopped. Even last year we had um, our students were on campus on the bricks. They were in hybrid format. They were still getting to experience everything that is the College of Charleston and the Charleston experience. So we're really glad that we've got our uh, current students with us tonight to give you just a little flavor of what it means to be a Cougar. I will tell you that I believe it's never been a better time to be considering the College of Charleston. Hopefully you're going to get to visit us in person this summer. If you have not been on the bricks, we are open for tours um, and we'll give you more information about how to do that and to, to visit us in lovely Charleston. Uh, but I, I think the strength of our um, our applications this year is definitely um, has demonstrated just uh, how many students see the College of Charleston as just a wonderful academic and diverse opportunity to continue uh, their college career for the next four years. This year we received the most applications in college history. We had a record setting number of over 20,000 applications for 2400 uh, freshman students that are going to join us. That's the largest freshman class that we've had in college history and one of the most diverse and talented classes as well. So whether you're considering our honors college, you're thinking about uh, a, a public liberal arts institution, maybe you're undecided and you want to explore or you're interested in one of our new STEM majors in systems engineering or electrical engineering. I believe there's a place for everybody here at the College of Charleston. So enjoy tonight, ask lots of questions. We hope to see you and your families here in Charleston, one of the most uh, beautiful campuses, definitely the most ranked, the most beautiful campus in South Carolina, but we hope to see you and answer all of your questions and we hope to see you very, very soon. So congratulations on getting to your next step and I'll turn it back over to Devin. Thank you, Amy. I'd like to just make a quick announcement before we begin our admissions information session. Um, tonight, in an effort to best grab attendance and track you all for attending and give you credit for this opportunity, um, our admissions counselors are going to drop a link in the chat to a Google form. It is optional. You certainly don't have to fill it out. Um, but again, this helps us um, award you uh, 
attendance for this evening's virtual event, and you'll also be entered into a raffle um, for a giveaway. So um, when you see that link, hit the chat. If you'd like to fill it out, please make sure to fill it out with your name and email address. All right, well, let's get started with tonight's virtual open house. I'm so excited to introduce you all to our assistant director um, of admissions, Aisha Steele. Aisha is going to lead us through an admissions information session and give you all some really valuable next steps um, and, and deadlines to keep on your radar. Aisha. Thank you so much, Devin, for that introduction. Good evening, everyone. Again, my name is Aisha Steele, and I serve as one of the assistant directors for admissions here at CFC. Um, and I recruit primarily in the Midwest region, including Kentucky and Tennessee. So hello, personal shout out to anybody from the Midwest or Kentucky or Tennessee tonight. Um, I first want to start off by congratulating you all on being here and gathering information that will be helpful in selecting the college that is right for you. Um, you guys will need to be organized and proactive to really make certain that you have a successful college search process. And that starts tonight. So I am here to give you more information about the one of a kind opportunities that CFC offers. Um, so let's get started. <clears throat> The College of Charleston is a nationally recognized public liberal arts and science university. Um, it is among some of the nation's top universities for a quality education, student life, and affordability. Um, the Princeton Review has recognized CFC as a top school in the United States for undergraduate education, and we are a medium-sized institution. So what that means is we combined all of the opportunities that you would look for from a larger research institution with that personalized intimate experience that you want from a smaller liberal arts college. Um, good advising, good academic advising, a strong focus on writing skills and interdisciplinary studies and a reputable business program are just some of the many perks that we offer here at CFC. And one of my favorite things that I love to tell students or prospective students is that you will spend just as much time in the field doing hands on research and being very um, interactive as you do in the classroom as well. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so we want to prepare you to succeed and we want you to be successful here at the College of Charleston. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but five to, well, college graduates today will have anywhere from five to seven career changes in their lifetime. And we feel like a liberal arts and science education really does offer the best chance for professional success over time. Um, our students are exposed to a range of academic disciplines um, that really make them well-rounded and flexible um, when they leave us. CFC students leave us also with um, strong communication skills, a global perspective, and they are really creative minded. So no matter what they choose to study or where their career takes them, they'll have all the tools necessary to be easily adaptable. And that is really what employers are looking for nowadays. And we wanna prepare you for your career and not just your first time job. Um, next slide, please. So we are seekers here. And one way we want you to seek to enhance your undergraduate experience is through research opportunities. As I mentioned earlier, we are a medium sized institution and we have about 10,000, a little over 10,000 students, 90% of these students being undergraduate students. So not only are the opportunities confined to graduate level students, our undergrads have the opportunity to participate in some of these opportunities and research opportunities are not just confined to the sciences as well. We have office offices and faculty members dedicated to supporting students who engage in serious hands-on research in every academic subject that we offer here College of Charleston. Next slide, please. Um, so we are doers. Charleston is bursting with internship opportunities um, and we place a high value on experiential learning. Our location allows our students the unique advantage to really get hands on with their learning, as I previously mentioned. Um, and one great thing about a cosmopolitan city like Charleston is that the opportunities are endless. Um, we've had over 250 business and tech startups in the last couple of years. We have 40 plus art galleries performance theaters for our students to get involved with and not to mention our world-class labs and facilities, um, a lot like our marine biology lab on Fort Johnson Island. Um, there are companies like Boeing, Google, Volvo right in our backyard for our students to intern with as well. Um, so at the very least, I say our students can leave us with impressive resumes and it is a priority for us to connect our students with these opportunities in the larger Charleston area. 
So we want you to be creators. Um, one way you can do this is we offer wide variety of, well, a wide range of activities focused on entrepreneurship here at the college. And one great example of this is our Impact X course. It is a competition where students team up to create a business and put together a business plan. And at the end of the semester, students actually get to pitch their business plan or their pitch to actual industry investors for the opportunity to win $10,000 to go towards their tech startup. It is a really cool program and I highly encourage any student that is interested in the business field to look into this program as well or this course. Next slide please. So we want you to explore um, and if you have not already started thinking about all that you want to do during your undergraduate time, I highly encourage you to consider studying abroad. Um, it is a great way to gain valuable life experience while immersing yourself in another culture. We are one of the top schools for studying abroad among public master level institutions. We offer more than 70 programs that students can enroll in, giving them educational opportunities across about five different continents. Um, and the College of Charleston offers study abroad options for the fall, spring, the summer term, as well as summer break or semester break options, so it doesn't delay your graduation as well. Next slide, please. So again, as I mentioned, we have about 10,000 undergraduate students on our campus. I um, mean, I know that sounds kind of large, but our campus actually feels a lot smaller. We are really a close knit community here. Our student to faculty ratio is about 15 to one and our average class size is about 24 students. Um, so what this means is students have access to your professors who will get to know you as an individual and not just a student in the classroom. Um, and more importantly to note, all of our faculty members are scholars first and they are dedicated to your success as a student. We offer over 140 major and minor options for our students to study from, um, a wide variety of options for you to study not only what you want, but what you're passionate about as well. Anything from the humanities to the sciences, um, but not only are we ensuring that our current programs are really up to date, relevant and career driven, we're constantly looking five to 10 years down the road at what windows of opportunities may be available to our students. So we're constantly adding to these options. Um, next slide. For example, now we actually offer a systems engineering degree, an electrical engineering degree, and a dual degree program in nursing for students that are interested in these areas to really meet the evolving needs of the marketplace here in Charleston. Next So there is so much to do to enrich your days while in Charleston, whether it's the Battery, the Marketplace downtown. We have three beaches located within 25 minutes of campus and not to mention the world renowned food scene. Um, we also have a year round calendar of events to include concerts, festivals, um, but more importantly to note is our campus is heavily integrated into the city of Charleston and those opportunities. Um, for example, our business marketing students actually help do the worldwide branding for um, the Spoleto Festival. They assist with that. Our science students have the option to intern and job shadow and assist at the Medical University of South Carolina, which is one of the largest teaching hospitals in South Carolina. Um, another example, our marine biology students actually do work with the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. And not to mention our hospitality and tourism students, they are in the number one tourist destination in South Carolina. So lots of opportunities to really get hands on. And we know that Charleston is a place where people come to vacation and spend their weekends, but it's also really innovative and fast growing. So we really want to make sure that our students are utilizing the area as a living and learning lab laboratory because of all of the opportunities. So we want you to come to campus. We want you to come onto our campus and find your thing and become a cougar and make the experience your own. Um, we have over 200 clubs and organizations for students to get involved with, from Greek organizations to social clubs, advocacy groups, volunteer organizations. We want you to come here and really broaden your sense of community. Um, we have 19 Division I varsity sports teams and we compete in the Colonial Athletic Association. If you are still interested in playing sports, but you don't want to do it on the collegiate level, we have 24 club slash intramural teams as well. 
But if you're just like me and you're not sports inclined, we have free admissions into all of our athletic events for students if you just want to be a spectator. Um, so there's literally something for everyone on our campus, and if we don't have something that you're used to being a part of, you most certainly can start that and force that path here at the college. So switching gears a little bit, talking about the application process, you can apply to CFC one of two ways, one being on the Common App, or you can apply on our website through our personal application, and we do not have a preference for whichever way you choose to submit your application. Our review process is very holistic, but I like to tell students it's only as holistic as you make your application. Um, we offer an optional essay for students who want to share more about themselves, and we encourage students to add a personal statement to relay any information you would like the person or the committee reading your application to consider about you. Um, resumes and letters of recommendation are not required for general admissions, um, but we happily accept any supplemental information or better get to know you throughout this application process. Next slide, please. In addition to submitting your application, we will also be looking at your test scores should you choose to submit them, along with your high school transcript. CFC does not have a numerical GPA requirement, so just know that when evaluating your transcript, we're looking for those strong A's and B's and that you've challenged yourself with some rigorous courses. Um, should you have any questions about what we look for or how to make your application stand out, please feel free to reach out to your admissions counselor. And if you don't know who that is, please just include your state in the chat and the lovely counselor Mandy Get will love to will be happy to tell you who your counselor is. So for the upcoming year, fall 2022, we are going, well, we're staying test optional for students. So you have the option on whether you want to submit your application with or without test scores and submitting test optional, so without scores, will not negatively impact your application process in any way. Um, we still would like homeschool students, international applicants, and athletes to submit scores, but should you not be able to, we just ask that you include any supplemental information and really get to better know you throughout this process. Next slide, please. So here is the statistical information for our fall 2020 incoming class, the average SAT, ACT scores, and GPAs that um, the incoming class had for the middle of 50 percentile of students um, for you to take a look at. It is important for you to know that we review each applicant individually and we evaluate students on the basis of their academic preparation and their potential for success at CFC. Um, allow to self-report academic documents so you can upload your test scores or you can upload your high school transcript um, on the application yourself. Um, just download it as a PDF or take a screenshot of it and you can upload that on your application and we would just require those official documents to you, well, should you choose to enroll at CSC. So here are our admissions deadlines for you to look at. Um, please take a note because they have changed. A few of the deadlines have changed. Our early decision deadline will be October 15th. This is a binding agreement. Should CFC be your number one choice, you can apply early decision. Um, our second deadline, which is non-binding and is essentially our early notification deadline, is early action and that deadline is November 1st. It is also the deadline to be considered as priority status for the Honors College. And the regular admissions deadline is January 15th. Um, and if you would like to be considered for any merit scholarships, please apply by January 15th as well. March 1st is the fast foot priority deadline and May 1st is National College Decision Day. And that is when you and your friends declare where you're going to school and you submit or is the deadline to have your enrollment and housing deposits submitted as well. If you are interested in diving a little bit deeper into your courses, I highly re recommend that you look into the Honors College. For those students that are used to taking AP, IB courses and really want to continue that trend on the collegiate level, we have about 800 students roughly in our Honors College program right now, and they are like-minded in that they want to challenge themselves. Um, we like to say that being a part of our Honors College isn't necessarily more work, but more in-depth work. Um, some of the benefits to being in the Honors College include smaller class sizes, um, the opportunity for additional scholarships, um, you get to complete a bachelor's thesis. We have faculty mentors, but deeper connections with faculty members as well. Um, and 
sorry. Um, the process for applying to honors has changed. So on our application, there will be a checkbox where you submit if you are interested in applying to the honors college and it would just require some additional information. Next slide. So that supplemental information submit with your honors college application will be um, uploading an activities list, a list or a resume that includes your extracurricular activities. And there is also an additional essay requirement for your honors college application. And again, that priority date is November 1st to be considered um, priority status and be considered for our fellow society. And here is the statistical data for the average student accepted into the honors college for the fall 2020 applicant year. So please take a look at this additional information. So if you fall somewhere around these stats and you are interested in the program, please consider applying to the Honors College. And that is my time. Of course, we invite you all to visit the College of Charleston at any time. We are open for summer tours at this moment. Um, and you also, we also have a fully running virtual visit center to include tours of our dorms, tours of our campus, and additional admissions information sessions as well. And that is my time and I will turn things back over to Devin. Class I have ever taken um, would have to be, it was a dance class, it was the interdisciplinary class that we explored embodied writing. So it was about dancing and writing and the connection between the mind and the body. I like to ride bikes around the downtown Charleston area. Um, I enjoy watching sitcoms, sometimes even writing for enjoyment as well. My classmates would be surprised to know that I used to want to be a fiction writer. So before I wanted to become a psychologist. I feel like the variety of opportunities really allow students to figure out what they don't like and even get on the path to finding what they do like. I think that CFC just has something for everyone. So whether it's a club, whether it's an organization, whether it's a specific department, um, there's something for everyone. So everyone can find their place here. Well, that was such a fun teaser uh, for our student panel from our um, most favorite recent graduate, Mariana Glenn Tolan. She was such a great resource um, for the college and is going on to do wonderful things uh, now that she has recently crossed the cistern. Um, but we are thrilled to introduce you all to some of our current students. They have wonderful perspectives and experiences to share with you all tonight. Um, so to get started with that, I'm going to now introduce our Associate Director for Visitor Services, Cam Salibi. Cam? Thanks, Devin. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, hello everyone. My name is, like Devin said, Cam Salibi. I'm the Associate Director for Visitor Services here. I'm going to help moderate uh, our student panel tonight. Uh, we have six amazing students uh, that I'm going to have some uh, some questions for them and they're going to answer or maybe a few of them will answer those questions. Um, but first we got to start off by introducing these students. Um, so I'm going to start with Danielle. Uh, if you could introduce yourself for us, please. Hey, my name is Danielle Morgan. I'm a rising junior here at the college majoring in supply chain management and I'm from Columbia, South Carolina. Awesome. Uh, Lily, if you'd like to go next for us, please. Hi, everyone. My name is Lily Fair. I'm a current senior here at the College of Charleston. Um, I'm an international studies and history double major, and I'm from Waxon, North Carolina. Perfect. Thanks, Lily. And I think De Deja's here. Am I right? You want to introduce yourself for us? Yes, I'm here. Great. Hi, my name is Deja Thompson, a current sophomore here at the college, and I'm studying communications. Awesome. Uh, Mr. Savaggio, could you introduce yourself for us, please? Sure. Uh, my name is Paul Savaggio. I'm a rising junior here at the college uh, studying business administration, and I am from New Jersey. Awesome. Uh, Joe, got you next. Hi, everyone. My name is Joe. Um, I'm in the Honors College. I'm a junior. I'm majoring in mathematics and biology with a minor in environmental and sustainability studies. Thank you, Joe. And last and certainly not least, uh, Ryan, could you introduce yourself for us? Yeah, hey everyone. My name is Ryan Thompson. I am a senior here in our Honors College from Merle's Inlet, South Carolina, and I'm a political science and history double major. Perfect. 
Thank you all so much. All right, well, let's go ahead and dive right in uh, to some of these questions. Um, the first one is, what does your average day uh, look like on campus as a CFC student? And I think Deja, you're going to take that one for us. Yeah, um, the average day is really just waking up and focusing on your classes. Um, if you're lucky enough, like I was this year, um, your classes aren't going to be um, all day. Um, you just go to class, come back, do homework, and by the time you're done, you can either focus on different club meetings or you can have your free time. It's really not an um, all-day sort of event. Awesome. Uh, and I do want to say sorry to the panelists as well. Uh, feel free, y'all, uh, to chime in if you would like to add anything uh, along the way. That is completely fine. Uh, not a problem at all. Um, we'll move right along, though. Um, the next question we have is, how do students build community at CFC? And Danielle, I think you're going to take that one for us. Uh, yes, I think the best way to build a community is just joining as many clubs as you can, as long as you're interested in them, so that you can have a community of people that are also interested in the things that you are. Um, classes are very small, so it's very easy to meet new people. And I also recommend spending as much time outside of your dorm and just like, being approachable and approaching people, whether that's in the dining halls or cistern yard, places like that. Awesome. Uh, and this kind of goes right along with that, which I think, Danielle, you're going to tackle for us. But what is diversity like at the College of Charleston? Are there specific clubs, student unions, uh, et cetera, available to different student groups? Yes, there's a lot of clubs specifically for diversity. My personal favorite is Student Ambassadors, and it's for any minority or first um, first generation college student. Um, there's also the Black Student Union. There's several diversity based Greek life organizations. Um, there's minorities in medicine, minorities in education, along other things, and it's just very good to get around. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Um, next question. Uh, Miss Lily's going to take this one for us. Is it difficult to have a traditional call experience since the College Charleston is in the middle of a city? So I actually grew up in the suburbs of Charlotte, so I never lived in a big city before I came to school. So I think Charleston's a pretty small city. Um, it's easy to explore and get to see new and different things in the city all the time. Um, having a traditional college experience isn't really a thing that comes to mind a lot when I'm on campus because it feels like such a small um, knit community. Um, we love our professors. We get to see them on the streets every day. It's definitely not something you'd see at a big university. I think there are definitely benefits to having the school being right in the middle. Um, and also the city is our campus. So, you know, our campus doesn't just extend to the two or three blocks where classes might be had. You, you know, you get to see the entire city as your campus, which I think is very cool and different. Can I ask as well, Paul, if you don't mind, since you, I think, maybe came from the farthest place away uh, and definitely from up in New Jersey, New York area, what, what was it like for you coming down here to the to the city of Charleston? Um, it was a really easy transition. And I think um, one of the parts of this is your first couple of weeks here, we're going to have something called Weeks of Welcome. So it's kind of gets gets you to know the uh, like Charleston community, the great way to meet people. Um, and that made it a lot more easy. Also, coming to college, no matter where you go, everyone's trying to make friends. It's not like you're the only one getting thrown into it. So everyone's in the same position you are, uh, which makes it very easy to meet other people. And even coming down to Charleston, just meeting people and going out and exploring the city, uh, it made it a lot easier to come down and the nice weather too. So that helps. Doesn't hurt. You're definitely right, Paul. Thank you. Um, next, we're going to talk a little bit about campus safety. Uh, and I want to turn to Ryan Thompson uh, to talk a little bit about uh, what safety is like here on our campus and the city of Charleston for that matter. Yeah, so like everyone has said, um, we are a very urban centered city. So I know for some families that might be like, whoa, how is it going to work with safety on campus? But here at the College of Charleston, we are fully transparent with everything that goes on on campus and in our city. So as a student, um, you, your parent or guardian will get a cougar alert anytime something happens in the city. Our Department of Public Safety are super friendly, always there to assist our students. We actually, throughout the city of Charleston, have these emergency call boxes. And when you press those, it connects you with the public safety officer within one minute, or someone will be to your location within one minute. 
Another thing I like to talk about with our students is we have a Cougar shuttle. So between the hours of 11 p.m. and 3 a.m., you can get dropped off or picked up anywhere on campus or in the peninsula. So that's a great service for our students. And then lastly, I like to say with our safety, um, because we are urban, we have public safety officers in all campus buildings from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. So they're just there to ensure it's just CFC students and their guests in our building. But overall, our campus is super safe and the city of Charleston is super safe. So I definitely recommend like if safety is something you're worried about, Charleston won't be a worry for you. Great, thanks so much, Ryan. Yeah, for sure. Um, I always make the joke, you know, if you're walking at 3 a.m. by yourself, we got to have a longer, uh, larger conversation about what's going on. So just make sure you got the buddy system when you're in the city of Charleston. But that's true of any city uh, for certain. Uh, next, we're going to talk a little about some support services. Um, what type of support services uh, are on our campus, tutoring, career center, et cetera? Um, and do students utilize them? Uh, Lily, if you want to tackle this for us. Sure. So we have countless services available on campus to kind of further support our student population. Um, we have a CSL in our library, which stands for the Center for Student Learning. Um, it's a tutoring center for students by students. It's a completely free service that we offer to our you know, kids who go to school here. We want them to succeed academically, and if they're struggling in a class, the CSL is a perfect place to go. Um, they have labs ranging pretty much every subject, and if it's not listed on their website, just shoot them an email and they'll connect you with somebody who can help you. I went there from I-300 level French classes, and it was honestly a lifesaver. Um, we also have an excellent career center at the College of Charleston. They want you to get connected with people in the field you're looking to go to, find internships in the city of Charleston, which we have a plethora of. I promise if you want an internship, you'll probably find one here in the city. Um, and something else we also have I love to highlight is our counseling center on campus. Um, they are there to help you with anything you could possibly need. There are um, text lines you can do if you need um, help if you're having a mental health crisis or anything like that. There are resources that you can access. Um, I think most students are aware of all of the um, incredible things that the college provides for us and utilize them as much as they can. Um, but there is always, you know, more utilization we can do. You know, you're paying tuition, you might as well use everything you can. Great, thanks, Lily. Um, can I ask, was, are any of the current uh, student panelists, were any of you tutors or have been tutors before? I worked in the CSL in the academic writing lab my freshman and sophomore years. Awesome. Great. It's a great service. You guys should all use it when you come to school here. Anybody else? I will say as an alum of the college, I definitely was a lifesaver myself, the CSL, a great, great service. All right, um, next we're going to talk about uh, what has been the most unique experience you've had so far as a student at the College of Charleston. I think we got a couple people who want to chat about this, but Danielle, will you start us off? Yes, um, every freshman has to take a first year experience class and there's several different options. Not all, there's like a dog one, there's so, any class. And I personally took the hospitality in Charleston class and it was just very good to be like a first year person in Charleston and the basis of the class is just to get to know the areas in Charleston and sightsee and explore and considering hospitality is so big it was so much to do and at the end of the semester we went on a dinner cruise and it was nice to just get to know all of your classmates and just let loose at the end of the semester and I thought that was a great experience. I mean, how many colleges can say you end your semester on a dinner cruise? I mean, that, uh, not many, I don't think. Uh, Ryan, I think you wanted to, to, to chat a little bit as well. Yeah, so I always love sharing this experience with students because I think this has made me more career ready for when I graduate than anything. So in the fall of 2020, I got to participate in the Washington semester program. So I got to intern in DC in Congress with Representative Joe Cunningham, who was out of the Charleston area. So I highly recommend this program to anyone who's interested in going into public policy, working in nonprofit fields, or just want to live in DC when you graduate. It was a such a life-changing experience and being able to do it during um, the election was super cool with RBG passing away. Obviously the election was very contested and everything. So being able to be there as a student was just so consequential to my learning. And I really hope all of you, when you come as CFC Cougars, will do that experience. You don't have to be poli sci, it's open to any major. So any interest you have, they can find a placement for you. So I definitely hope y'all will utilize that. Very cool, thanks Ryan. Um, 
next we're going to chat about, and Ryan, you're going to take this one as well. What is your favorite thing about the College Charleston, and what's one thing you might change about the college? Yeah, so my absolute favorite thing about our campus are the faculty and staff that we have. Um, when I was going through my college decision process, the most important thing to me was not to feel like a number on campus and to truly feel like the faculty and my professors were there to support me. And so I can honestly say that the faculty on campus just want you to thrive. Any opportunity or path you may want to go to, they will find every resource in their power to ensure that you're following your goals and just growing as a student. So I cannot talk highly enough about our faculty. Um, the one thing I might change, I just wish we might have some like new buildings on campus. Obviously being in Charleston, we are a little bit um, constricted by the peninsula we're on. So no real big changes. I would just like a new building for poli sci because I'm a poli sci major. So that's a little there. But also if there's something that any of you as students want to change when you're on campus, this is my shameless self plug for our student government association. So please come join SGA. We're here to make changes on campus and I'd love to see y'all in it next year. Yes, I bet y'all didn't know you're talking to the president of our SGA, Mr. Thompson there. So, you know, there you go. Uh, I feel like I'm leaving Joe out. So Joe, I'm just gonna throw you in here. What is one of the favorite things you uh, you have about the College of Charleston? I wanna make sure the families get to see that, that pretty face. Yeah, for sure. One of my favorite things about the College of Charleston is um, in-depth research um, that you can do here at the College of Charleston, especially as a primarily undergraduate institution, you really do get priority. Um, and are able to get those experiential learning opportunities that set you apart in the job market and if you're looking into grad school. So um, especially, you know, speaking from School of Science and Mathematics, I'm an ambassador, so I've been able to do a lot there. Um, we have one of the biggest collection sites for marine biology in the southeast. Um, and then we also have lots of summer grants and stuff. I'm currently working on a summer grant that's uh, fully funding my research for the summer. So. That's one thing I love about the College of Charleston, lots of great opportunities, and that's not only for STEM. I have friends who major in English and philosophy who are also on a similar grant for the summer for research. So anyone's welcome to do that. So the, so I'd say that's my favorite thing about the college. Love it. That's awesome, Joe. Thanks for sharing. Appreciate it. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about student, student involvement. I know um, Aisha talked a little bit about clubs and orgs on our campus and, and other ways to be involved, um, but we're going to dive a little bit of that. I think, Ryan, you said you jump in. Uh, and talk about what types of things students are involved with, but I encourage all of y'all to, to chime in, student panelists, because I know you're all involved in very different things, so it might be nice to hear a little bit about uh, what you're involved with, why you joined it, and things like that, but Ryan, if you want to kick us off. Yeah, so like I already said earlier, we have a student government. We also have over 200 different clubs, organizations on campus, and one of my favorite things is if there's not a club that fits for you, it just takes you and nine of your friends to come to SGA and we can make you a new club. But like all of us on this panel, I'm also a tour guide, or not everyone on the panel is a tour guide, but lots of familiar faces there. So I'm also a tour guide for our campus. Um, there's a lot of different political organizations and other organizations, so whatever your interests are. So I'm involved with our SC Politics Club, but also we have a lot of great opportunities for students to get involved on and off campus. So if you're interested in anything in the greater Charleston area, there's lots of different opportunities for you to explore outside the classroom. I can also jump in if you want me to, Cam. Yes, um, please. It's Lily again. Um, so like Ryan, I'm also a tour guide. I actually serve as the president of the Charleston 40 Tour Guide Association. So see you guys out there in the fall. Um, I also have an internship um, that I got through the College of Charleston with the South Carolina Historic Society. I work in their archives doing, um, I'm working on an oral history project on interviews from the 1940s right now. So riveting stuff, very interesting. Um, I'm also involved in Greek life on campus. We are not a go Greek or go home school by any means. We're only about 20% Greek. Um, I'm incredibly biased towards it though. So I would encourage all of you to try it out even if you <laughs> don't seem too interested. But um, I've been involved in several clubs on campus. Um, there's a cheese club that I've been on in for the past three years. You pay a couple dollars at the beginning of the semester, get to try cheeses. What a Who wouldn't want to do that, you know? Um, but I've also had a couple on campus jobs as well. So there's I've done everything and anything in between. So um, really get out there. There's things for everybody. So you should all go join lots of clubs when you come to school here. I can also add in uh, one more thing. There's also in Charleston. Um, I encourage everyone obviously to come visit the school, but there is every single industry you can imagine in the Charleston area. 
you walk around campus and ask people what they do there's there's not one industry that escapes so people um there's i know we mentioned during the presentation boeing and you know all these businesses are down there people are always in every industry and uh Clubs and organizations are a big one that people join and also volunteer opportunities. Uh, if you are interested in the Honors College your freshman year, you are gonna do one volunteer opportunity. Uh, there's different paths you can take, but I took tutoring students in uh, one of the Charleston area. So there's just so much, so many things to do and there's so many industries in Charleston that you, that you can always join. Go ahead, Danielle. I think you look like you wanna, go ahead, please. Um, I wanted to go off of the kind of service-based clubs. There's quite a few that I'm familiar with and um my wait what am I trying to say um I know that there's bomber leaders I'm not completely familiar with that but I do know quite a few people that are doing that and there's also Charleston Miracle which is kind of a fresh one I, I believe and I'm actually the vice president of the morale committee and that club is basically where we get to go to the children's hospital at MUSC pretty frequently and just visit the kids that are um, kind of hospital bound and just try and make their lives a little bit better. And we donate quite a bit of money and it's a very good club and it really makes you feel happy. <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. Uh, thanks, Danielle. Yeah, that Charleston Miracle is a great one. Um, and shameless plug as well, since Ryan already mentioned it. I don't know, I'm certain, but I know Danielle mentioned it, but uh, student ambassadors and the C40 Tour Guide Association are out of our office and both amazing organizations. So, you know, if you want to come down and be a part of them, you got some good people right here who are part of them and we would love to have you. Um, so definitely a shameless plug there. Um, we're going to switch gears to get another question here. And I know, Joe, you talked on this a second ago, but I just want to t dive a little bit deeper into the opportunity to participate in undergraduate research here on our campus. Awesome, yeah, for sure. So there are plenty of opportunities to do undergraduate research. I know I personally have been in about three different projects. Um, so for about a year, I worked at a lab at the Medical University of South Carolina under the Department of Molecular Psychiatry and Behavioral Neuroscience. And so that was an awesome opportunity and it's a lot of fun, especially if you're interested in pre-med or pre-health. If you work in those labs, you often get to boss around a lot of the medical students, which is always a good time. Great experience I had. But um, at the College of Charleston, I've also had research experience. Um, right now I'm doing a research opportunity with um, a faculty member in the computer science department and we're doing a problem that tackles mathematics, biology, and computer science all at once. So again, kind of going back to that liberal arts curriculum where you're really able to focus on um, a holistic view and getting able to tackle that. And that's also what I'll be doing my undergraduate honors thesis on um, starting this fall. And then also in the fall, I'll be working on a research project on the genetic information of coral populations. So there's plenty of research opportunities in the Charleston area. Um, one of my best friends right now is doing an opportunity um, studying Gothic monstrosity in literature um, from like not ancient England, but you know, pretty old England. So, you know, there's definitely something for everyone. So definitely recommend checking it out. And um, yeah, so definitely plenty of opportunities to participate in undergraduate research. Awesome, thanks Joe. Yeah, and I, I want to second what you said about that interdisciplinary work. That's something we definitely hang our hat on. And you can see that in what Joe is saying, uh, working across a lot of different disciplines there, um, which is really, really cool. Um, we talked a little bit about this in the presentation, but I do want to touch on this, our Honors College, uh, and you have a couple of members of the Honors College here. Uh, Paul's going to talk a little bit about uh, what his life has like been in the college, Honors College, though. Sure. Uh, so th what the Honors College is, it's just a smaller community in the larger campus community. So it's about 800 uh, students that make a, that comprise of the Honors College. Uh, the classes aren't any harder than what the regular classes would be. It's just different. So instead of, you know, in one English class, you might be reading three or four books and in an honors English class, you might only read one, but you just go more in depth into it. Um, also, not, it's not like when you're in the honors college, you're only with honors college students. Only about 25% of your coursework is throughout the honors college. The rest of it's going to be throughout the regular college. Um, I did live in the honors living learning community my freshman year, which is a good experience uh, because you're going to be going to class with students that you live with. So we, we all had an 8 a.m. on Monday class, and it was just like a herd of students going at the same time at 750 on Monday morning. So it's kind of cool. You're just like going to class with students that you live with. Um, I had, you know, great experience in the honors college, meeting different people, 
uh, within it and also going to class with them and living with them and also doing like our volunteer opportunities together. So I have a great experience in the Honors College. I recommend anyone to apply. It's only one more essay, which at this point you're writing. I don't even know how many I wrote applying to colleges. It's one more and a resume. That's all it takes to apply. So I would always just recommend apply. It's also a holistic uh, review process. So just apply to it. It's a great experience and uh, talk to people while you're visiting Charleston as well. Cool, thanks, Paul. Um, next, we're going to talk about study abroad a little bit um, and do most students study abroad at the College of Charleston. Uh, Lily, if you want to take that one for us. Sure. Um, so unfortunately, due to COVID, I was unable to study abroad at my time at the College of Charleston, but I had intended to study abroad three times. Um, about, I think, I would say more than half of our students study abroad at the College of Charleston. We have over 100 programs that you are able to apply to. Um, studying abroad is one of the best experiences that you can get while you're in college, so I'd highly recommend you do that. And if you're a little nervous about study abroad, this is a little shameless plug, so not shameless actually at all. Um, so the first year experience programs do study abroad opportunities the second semester, where you take a class and then you go abroad with your classmates spring break. I did that my freshman year. It is one of my most like favorite memories I have at CFC. So I went to Scotland with like eight people. We had a great time. We looked at a bunch of castles. It was a literature based class. So we read the entirety of Macbeth and then visited all of the sites that we learned about in Macbeth. So but there's any destination you want to attend around the world you can go to. Um, you can go to Morocco, Australia, um, Ghana, anywhere in Europe, pretty much anywhere in Asia as well. So really get out there look at those opportunities. There's also very good scholarships and funding available. Um, and the application process is super easy. So we have a portal that is connected to everything you need to know. And our study abroad office is also staffed by the sweetest people ever. So they're, they're there to help you through the process. Very cool. Uh, I could thanks add so much. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah. yeah, just one more thing about study abroad, especially for the northern students here. Um, so southern schools tend to get out earlier. So we have a program that's a May master program, which I was going to do, but COVID kind of ruined that. So basically you would study abroad from like I think it's mid-May to like June 4th and a lot of the northern schools if your friends are staying in north they don't get out till end of May anyway so you can kind of just spend your time while because otherwise you'd be home by yourself without anyone you can go abroad for those the three weeks that all your friends are still at school and then when you come back everyone will be back home with you so I mean it's open to everyone but it's a good idea for northern students when you're just home for May not really doing anything it's you can go abroad get extra credits and then come back when everyone else does. Cool. Thanks for thanks for throwing that in, Paul. Um, and I will say as we move forward, um, you know, our, our Center for International Education is definitely, um, you know, full steam ahead as, as far as trying to get students abroad uh, this fall uh, and definitely hopefully in the spring as well. So if you are thinking about the future, hopefully we're going to be you know getting students out there for sure. Um, a couple more questions left. Um, this one goes to Joe. Are professors at the College of Charleston approachable? And what are your what do you feel about your class sizes here at the College of Charleston? Yeah, so I'll kind of start with class sizes. We have about um, an average class size of 22. So it's a very intimate classroom setting and our student to faculty ratio is 15 to one. Um, so definitely we have that ability to approach our professors because we are in an intimate classroom setting and they do get to know your name. Um, the largest class I've ever had at the College of Charleston had a whopping 30 people. So, you know, um, it's You'll never have a super huge class. I think the largest it'll get is around 100, and those are really for your big gen ed courses, those big biology, intro to biology courses. So you don't really have to worry about that too much. And because of that, professors are super approachable. Um, that's how I got all of my research experience so far is by just walking up to a professor and being like, hey, I like this class. What are you doing in your lab right now? And they're like, ah, you know, come on in. So um, definitely super approachable. And in fact, I definitely encourage you to approach them. And one nice thing about the College of Charleston is that since our professors are approachable, you'll notice that maybe a lot of your friends who go to bigger state schools, who are applying to graduate school, medical school, or looking for jobs out in the industry, will have trouble getting letters of recommendation from their professors because none of them know them because their classes are filled with 700 people. But at the College of Charleston, it's pretty easy to find letters of recommendation um, because, again, you have such small class sizes that they're bound to know your name. That's awesome. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate that. Uh, Lily, do you want to talk a little bit about, about living on campus um, and do most students live on campus? Yeah, 
much. So um, as a freshman, you're not actually required to live on campus at the College of Charleston, although about 90% of our freshmen do. I would highly recommend it. I think it's the best way to get connected on campus is by living with your friends and living with your fellow students. Um, I lived on campus my freshman year and also my junior year. Um, there are countless different types of ways you can live on campus. None of our residence halls are structured the same, so you can really pick one that fits your needs. I lived in an apartment style residence hall my freshman year called Warren. So there were eight girls, uh, a full kitchen, full living room. It was always a fun time. I have some amazing memories from my freshman year residence hall. Um, we also have upper dedicated to making sure that our freshmen have an incredible experience in their residence hall, you know, doing programming, um, making sure that they get everything they need, know how to do laundry, all those basics. Um, and also, if they're struggling in school, they can get them connected to resources on campus. Um, but we also have a thing that I don't think I know another college that has, which are historic houses. Um, Charleston is a historic city. If you've ever been here before, if you haven't, come see us. Um, we have houses all over the city that the college has owned and operated that kind of have been converted into residence spaces for our students. So I lived in one my la last year and it was really great. It was living on campus, but living in a house just on our own so it was an affordable option for living downtown and also very simple if something broke we just called maintenance and didn't have to worry about it too much so highly recommend living on campus there's lots of choices so yeah great thanks so much lily uh and then finally we're going to end uh and again feel free if some other students want to jump in but paul's going to tackle this one to start um why did you choose the college of charleston Sure. So uh, I come from outside New York City, so I kind of wanted a school that was in a city, but also didn't feel like you were in a city. So if you come visit Charleston, which I said, like I would definitely recommend doing, you're going to realize that you have your own college campus feeling when you're sitting in the sister, you don't feel like you're in a city. But if you go five, 10 minutes downtown, you have the law offices, the businesses and pretty much all the opportunities of a city. So if, I know it doesn't really make sense, but I wanted a city school, but I didn't want to be like in a large city. So that's exactly what I found in Charleston. Um, I found the college campus. I, we have our own campus, uh, but we're so well intertwined in the city that when I didn't realize how great it was, like just all meshed well together. Um, and then also our faculty offices and our faculty and staff um, going into your freshman year, you know, first intro calculus class and you're sitting in a classroom with you know, 15, 20 people. And then my philosophy class freshman year, we sat at a table with our professor um, I just, it was just crazy how you're in college, you have, you know, you're at a, a school, a state school in South Carolina, but you have such a great, um, like, community between professors and students. So that's why I would say I chose the college. Yeah, and if uh, I could jump in as well, if you wouldn't mind, Cam. Um, one of the big reasons I chose the College of Charleston is, um, as a lot of you might be feeling, um, college is super difficult to navigate, trying to figure out what you want, what you need. Um, I'm a first generation college student. My family's from outside, well, actually inside of New York City. Um, so, you know, kind of navigating academia and higher education was super confusing for me because, you know, I never had family that went to college. And so I was trying to figure out all on my own and I'd call different colleges, universities, and I'd get left on voicemail or they wouldn't answer my emails. But when I called the College of Charleston, they stayed on the phone with me for 30 minutes, humoring all my really simple questions and answering them to their fullest extent. And then was even like, hey, if you want to come in and sit down and talk, we can. So right off the bat, you know, the College of Charleston gives off great first impressions. And just like Paul said, that intimate campus size, but still being integrated in the city is such a unique experience that you really can't get anywhere else. I jump um jump in on Joe. Um, I want I agree with you. The um, first impression of the College of Charleston, mine was um, the Move program. I was able to stay overnight and hang out with some very amazing people who answered all of my questions. Um, I got to stay with this um, really cool person who I still talk to to this day, and that is really why I chose the College of Charleston. Um, not only did they show me how diverse that they can be, um, they showed me that, you know, like you matter, your voice matters, your representation matters, and they were just so nice and helpful. Go ahead, Ryan. Okay, I also wanted to jump in, but Joe and Deja definitely just touched on like everything I wanted to say, but 
my best advice to y'all during this college admissions process is go where it's going to feel like home again. I'm from South Carolina. My oldest sister went to C of C when I was five. So I visited the college when I was a little kid. And just the amount of love and support that our campus gives to every one of our students just to be yourself. For me, as a queer individual from South Carolina, I've also I've struggled with feeling safe where I am and stuff. And so call, like being at the campus, I've never felt so supported and just allowed to grow. Our motto here is know thyself. And we really do want you to grow as an individual and learn every possible thing about yourself that you can. So my best advice is just once y'all visit, sit on one of those benches in the cistern, close your eyes and just, if you could vision this as your next home, join the college because it has been more than a home to me and i hope every student gets to have that experience regardless where you go to college awesome thanks so much y'all really pulling at the heartstrings there all, all four of y'all uh that's 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 nice uh thank you all students for for your for your answers to the questions uh, and i'm gonna turn it back over to Devin um to wrap us up Thank you students and Cam. I always love hearing from our students. You all are doing amazing things and it makes me want to relive my college experience all over again because I'm always so inspired by each of you. Uh, but students and families, we just want to again thank you for joining us tonight. We know you had a busy uh, day. Well, maybe some of you. It is summer break for a lot of you. Um, and we thank you for taking this time to join us and learn more about the College of Charleston student life experience. A few quick reminders before we log off tonight. Uh, we know that you are getting busy planning either summer trips or looking ahead to fall college tours, and we are busy as well planning those opportunities for you. So please continue to take note of our um, Virtual Visitor Center's website and our uh, calendar of events where you can register online. Uh, we have several um, in-person events happening this fall, and we will also have a ton of virtual offerings as well, just in case you can't make it to campus, um, whether it's distance or school commitments, things like that. We're going to meet you where you are um, throughout this, this next step process as you um, apply. But again, thank you for joining us tonight. We're always just a phone call or email away. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. We are here for you. Have a great night.